Hey guys, this video we're going to focus on how an emissions trading scheme as part of the government's environmental policy can affect our living standards. So first I'm going to define both terms, what an emissions trading scheme is and what our living standards are. Now emissions trading scheme, as we've talked about so many times in this playlist, is a cap and trade system on CO2 emissions. So what this creates is actually a market for carbon permits. And as a result, this puts a price puts a price on emissions. And the overall aim of this policy is to well, firstly mitigate climate change or the risk of climate change as well as mitigate or slow the process of global warming and this has all to do this all has to do with um, our relationship with our natural resources so the goal of our emission trading scheme is to create a situation where we have abundance an abundance of natural resources for use in the future. Okay, with this in mind, we're going to look at the definition of living standards. Okay, so I'm just going to put a line down here. So living standards can be broken up into two things, and we haven't really talked about living standards for a long time, so we're just going to recap this and split this up into material and non-material. Now, material living standards refers to our purchasing power or relates to our purchasing power of goods and services. Now, the more goods and services we can consume, we are said to have a greater material living standard. Our non-material living standard refers to our overall well-being. And that relates to the health, crime rates, and all the other subjective views on one's well-being. So this is very subjective, and there's no definitive uh, framework as to what our non-material living, sta living standards are, but they're very subjective depending on the person that you are. Okay. So overall, material and non-material living standards make up our overall living standards. So we're going to look at how the emissions trading scheme can affect both our material and non-material living standards in both the short and long runs. Now, obviously because the emissions trading scheme creates an on cost or an additional cost to businesses, this would reduce employment. So this ETS, in the short run, I'm just going to note here, in the short run, would lead to additional costs, which would then lead to unemployment, particularly structural unemployment, because businesses would tend to shed workers in order to maintain their profit margins. And where there is structural unemployment in the short run, this would actually lead to a decrease in purchasing power, which I'm just going to write as PP. So because people are moving from, or uh, those who lose their jobs, actually move from factory incomes, derived from their factor of production being labour, to transfer incomes, so being on welfare, uh, paid to by the government, they're actually going to experience a decrease in purchasing power, and as a result, a decrease in material living standards. So it's going to be a decrease in material living standards in the short run. Some people may derive a sense of esteem from their employment, and so they may also experience a decrease in their non-material living standards in the short run as well. So overall we can see that the emissions trading scheme may be bad for living standards in the short run. And that's where all the, uh, all the concern is all about when, the go when these governments introduce either a carbon tax, a cap and trade system, the emissions trading scheme, and all these other sorts of environmental policies which add costs to businesses which may result on employment. So that's why the public is very against 
these emissions or these environmental policies because in the short run they would suffer material and non-material living standards so I'll experience a decrease in both but now let's look at the long run I'm just going to rub uh, this out and look at the long run material living standards you know, in the long run this emissions trading scheme would actually result in businesses moving to greener alternatives and by greener alternatives that means say solar energy hydro energy geothermal or anything that doesn't incur this uh, the the um, excuse me these carbon permits so they're trying to avoid paying for these carbon permits in order to produce and therefore they would move to greener alternatives such as solar, wind, hydro, whatever you want to name it. And as a result, this would mean more jobs created in these sectors. And when more jobs are created in these sectors, that would lead to employment increases. So we can see that in the long run when jobs are moved away from uh, these sectors that produce are heavy, heavily reliant on carbon emissions to produce, they will actually move towards greener alternatives. And this is an example of relative prices when the, the profitability of one way of method of production becomes lower then businesses will move to an alternative method of production. And so as a result, in the long run, we will see that more jobs were created and our material living standards will increase in the long run because we experience a greater purchasing power. Our non-material living standards in the long run would also increase because firstly, we will see that our overall air quality will be better, our, or the, the predicted rate of climate change or global warming was slow or even be mitigated and as a result we will experience better health better air quality and all these other subjective factors of our non-material living standard and again once our employment rates increase this would actually increase the well-being of people because they do have another sense of purpose uh, to their lives they have a sense of esteem confidence associated with being part of a job and with being part of a community and we'll see that the non-material living standards in the long run will be more sustainable if this emissions trading scheme goes ahead. So as a whole, we will see that in the short run, material and non-material living standards in some shape or form may decrease. However, this sacrifice must be made in order for our long run material and non-material living standards to prosper. So that's the trade-off between uh, current current gains in material and non-material living standards versus future gains and that's how where the government needs to make the decision as to whether to implement this emissions trading scheme or to uh, risk the, the, um, the future prosperity of our generations.